Make sure your team is prepared to fight off the latest cybersecurity threat. IT Pro TV is the resource to keep you and your IT team skills up to date. You can stream IT Pro TV's courses live and on demand worldwide, so there's no need to send staff to off site training. Their team solution provides access to a supervisor portal for full control over your team's training schedule and group analytics. Visit itpro.tv forward slash enterprise security and use the code ES30 to try it free for seven days and receive 30% off your monthly membership for the lifetime of your active subscription. To learn more about IT Pro TV's team solution, sign up for a free demo of their supervisor portal. Pony Express, check out their line of penetration testing devices, including the Pone Pad, Pone Phone, and Pone Pro. For enterprises, there's Pone Pulse, providing continuous visibility into wired, Wi Fi, and Bluetooth spectrums across all physical locations, including remote sites and branch offices. For all those hard to reach places, there's Pony Express. Visit them on the web at ponyexpress.com. Quest Software has solutions that allow you to add an additional layer of security to your Microsoft environment. To learn how they can help you protect and detect changes in your environment, please go to quest.com forward slash MPM. Welcome back, everyone, to Enterprise Security Weekly. Uh, make sure you check out our webcast with Cyber Reason, securityweekly.com forward slash Cyber Reason to uh, learn about how, basically, uh, you can get better at finding indicators of compromise in your environment. Basically, Joff and I are going to poke some holes at uh, some of the various ways, including uh, on the endpoint, including logs, including network, including threat intelligence, and then have a discussion about what are some better solutions for threat hunting, along with uh, Ross from Cyber Reason. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Providence HackerCon <laughs> is being held on October 21st. Uh, you can go to securityweekly.com forward slash provhackcon, and we're opening up to, to everyone who's interested in basically learning about how we get the youth of today more involved with cybersecurity. So if you want to come here, myself, Doug White, Ron and Cindy Gula, Ben Jackson, and others give presentations about how you can get into this field of information security, we're opening up to everyone. So just come along and join the party. Even if you want to just come hang out, securityweekly.com forward slash prof hatcon. John, you wanted to start off with uh, what was interesting, I thought, is that when this story was covered, there was actually a McAfee, like Intel security McAfee logo on this story. But it's not uh -huh. actually, it has nothing to do with McAfee. It is uh, the company, it is John McAfee, is revealing an anti-hacking system called Sentinel, which very much I sounds like similar solutions in the market that do passive analysis of traffic and pick up on attacks. Well, it, it also makes itself look enticing to an attacker. And honestly, the more I read about this thing, the more it looks like Canary, only yeah, yeah. like a lot more expensive. Um, I got an opportunity to look at the Canary product and what they actually have. And it's really slick. It's easy to use and it's cost effective. This is like four times more expensive than Canary. And I honestly don't know what the differentiation is at all. Yeah, and that's weird coming from John McAfee. Uh, you think that he would know kind of what was already in the marketplace, but I guess sometimes you get blind to that. Mm. You want to talk about Shield X. What is Shield X? Yeah. So Shield X, the idea of cloud attacks, this is something that we've been seeing a lot of products go into. Of course, you have the Casbys in there as well. One of the things that's a big problem for many organizations that are using cloud-based uh, services, whether it be something like Google Apps or something of that nature, is how do you actually hook into like your Google Apps, for example, to actually identify attacks? And just to give you an example, years ago, not even years ago, a year ago, at BHIS, we thought we were actually compromised, and I've talked about this in a number of other shows. And the problem was we didn't actually have good logging fidelity to actually quickly get to the bottom of what was actually going on. After a while, through a roundabout way, we found out what was going on. It was someone's mobile travel app that was doing weird things, and we were able to rectify that, but the visibility just wasn't there. So we mm -hmm. had to upgrade to an enterprise-level customer to get that level of logging and fidelity. And it seems to me like this is a wide open space for a lot of vendors to be moving into to actually hook into the existing cloud access or cloud service vendors and actually start pulling down their logs to do things like behavioral analytics for that type of access. And I know some CASBs are in this space. So I think that this is interesting. Um, WebRoot kind of moving into this as well. It's, uh, it's, it's going to be wide open for a while. And so far, we haven't seen any products that work all that well in this area at all. 
So also what products that I think are interesting and, and maybe don't work are biometrics for physical security. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you encounter these on many penetration tests. This one's kind of interesting. Um, so there's a, a biosec uh, company called Biosec Group Limited has partnered with Honeywell. Um, and God. Biosec brings in palm vein recognition. So this isn't a fingerprint. This is it's actually palm. Yeah, it measures the Print. inner characteristics of the vein structure within your hand to do the biometrics. Look, look closely into my hand and I will tell you how many children you will have and how long you will live. And now and now, we, now you everyone has access to your computer. Everyone has your palm vein structure now, John, and can impersonate Now they you. have it. I, I've just given it, it up. Like they couldn't Let's have gotten it. that my oh, eyes. Now they got mine too. That's it. it now they, oh, we're, God, done. we're done. We're done. We're done. Every time I shake a hand, it's an attack. Um, I just don't think so, this really helps push the envelope with physical security. Uh, because you know I, you're I gonna tail you're cool. gonna tailgate to get in. I I don't know. It's it's Hollywoodish. It's neat. You know, it's cool. It looks like it's gonna be awesome. But, but I think it, we've seen this on pen test, John. You and I together actually. That uh, the devices that detect tailgating when you when you badge in are the most effective at it. There's no biometrics that are needed yeah. in this it, scenario. Just detect the it's tailgating. Two doors. Just two doors. One person enter, one person leave, and right. yeah, it's there's really that, and then there's the like little access devices that you have to badge in. In a, it detects if someone walks behind them, it doesn't badge in, uh, and mm -hmm. they're, they're just like little gates that that you walk through. So I mean, that's effective and, too. But this is getting into a larger question. Like whenever we're talking about two factor authentication at Wild West Hack and Fest, you and I need to talk like like more regularly. Uh, we just came up with an entire toolkit and a framework for bypassing, um, or not really bypassing, but attacking successfully mm -hmm. two factor authentication in Google apps. Um, nice. Not just, you know, it, it, it's like a full framework and we're releasing it at Wild West Hack and Fest. And one of our main concerns is what the hell do we recommend to our customers? Mm. Um, a lot of these things for what, be it biometrics, be it two factor authentication, they have limitations and the tools are getting easier and easier used to attack them. I think you and I I would agree they're still better than just a user ID and a password, but we really don't have a lot of places to go to. Yeah, um, no, after I agree. Done with You're getting the physical token to work via NFC with your smartphone is problematic at best. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I, I, yeah yep. So I agree. Um, what else do we want to talk about? Um, fishing. I like Oracle. Oh, oh, uh, yeah. oh, you got phishing? I, I, I'm on the phishing one. No. Oh, so phishing email is responsible for almost all successful cyber attacks. I think this is not really news, yeah. right? I mean, this is still... No. We did a whole webcast really. on this topic, so... Yeah, and we've been talking about it. I don't think that this news has uh, has really changed in the past 15 years. I agree. But it's odd because there's still a lot of people that are looking at, like, you know, advanced cyber threat intelligence, and they're trying to find the next, 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 next generation firewalls <laughs> and data loss prevention. And it's like, it's crap, please just have your users stop clicking the damn links. Right. Let's start there. And you're going to get a lot more bang for your buck. Um, and what was the Oracle story on? The Oracle one is interesting. I, I'd like to actually see some more, um, like the idea of um, a, 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 like an automatic database and like throwing data at it and then automatically having it index and run things properly. It almost seems like an Elasticsearch type approach. Um, but God, Oracle has the money to actually pull this stuff off whenever they're trying to do artificial intelligence and machine learning for data aggregation. Mm -hmm. So this is more interesting to me in the tech geek perspective well, what than I find, it is actually. What I found most interesting, John, was it, um, they say it eliminates the need for a database administrator to patch, update, or tune the database. So essentially doing that in an autonomous way. Which, I mean, database I think, patching, as you and I both know and most of our community knows, is is extremely problematic and something that's not yeah. done consistently because of the repercussions and because of the dependencies and because of the complexity. And Oracle is basically saying, well, we can use artificial intelligence and machine learning to accomplish this. That's that's pretty – that's a bold the statement. Patching side, the patching side I think is crap. I, I think that we can all look at that and be like, oh, that's BS. Um, but the other stuff as far as tuning the database, now that gets really interesting yeah. because you can actually use artificial intelligence algorithms and machine learning to look at how your data comes in and then how that data is being accessed and then optimizing the schema so it represents that data much faster. And that's cool. Uh, that actually seems like it's not hype. That actually seems you, pretty awesome. What would you do for a patch? It would have to analyze your code and analyze the patch <laughs> and somehow make a determination that this patch is going to oh, break God. that code. And then using AI, 
write the code to fix it. Like that would be look, that would look, be scary. Right, that's so, scary. That's scary. So right that's now Skynet. We're, we're going. That's <laughs> Skynet stuff. And I also know it's garbage because we're currently working with Oracle uh, for responsible coordinated disclosure of a couple of vulnerabilities. Nothing monstrous, but a couple mm. of their products. And working with their security team and their their team that we go back and forth is is a nightmare. Um, it, it it's just that I really wish somebody technical from Oracle would just give me a call and <laughs> uh, I could talk about some of these issues because working with their lower level people, it's like they, they said cross-site scripting is only applicable if it's in a URL and it's a get request. So I'm not holding out a lot of hope for artificial intelligence for code <laughs> optimization and security, but optimization of databases, absolutely. Uh, I think that rounds out the news stories. There wasn't much to report on this week in terms of new products, features from uh, enterprise security companies. So hopefully next week we'll be a little more feature rich in our news department. John, thank you very much. It was awesome having Mary uh, on today's show as well. Uh, very, Get her very back. Great. I liked her. Yeah, she, she's she was awesome. Good. She's awesome. I'm a huge fan. So thank you everyone for listening and watching this edition of Enterprise Security Weekly. See you next time. <laughs>